Hey, Tommy from The Run Testers. In this video, we are going to be talking all about cushion shoes. So we're going to be discussing loads of different topics from what exactly is a cushion shoe, what you might look for in a cushion shoe, and some of the good cushion shoes that we've tested over the past few months. Uh, this video is also part of the audio podcast. So if you're planning on listening to that at some point, don't watch this video because it's all included on there. Right, let's jump in and talk cushioning. Okay, so cushion shoes. We've do, we're doing quite a few um, videos around different types of shoes at the moment. Cushion shoes is one that uh, obviously is very close to my heart, um, <laughs> but is is quite a tricky area nowadays because there's lots of different types of cushion shoes. And when people ask what what cushion shoes should they buy, it's a bit of a minefield, really. Um, so what we're going to do here is talk through the types of cushion shoes, what you should expect from a cushion shoe, what should what what people are looking for in cushion shoes. Um, uh, so let's start with a nice, easy one. Um, how, Nick, you could do this one because you, you're quite good at classifying these things. How do we classify <laughs> cushion shoes at the run testers? Uh, I think, well, you can't just go on stack height because most race shoes have the highest stack heights these days. But stack height is an indicator. Usually they're quite a lot of cushioning in the midsole, well over 30 millimeters often. And it's more really about the design being geared for easy long runs daily training that kind of thing they've not got very aggressive setups really you know, there's no plates in the midsole there's no very springy foams or really wild forefoot rockers or anything like that they're geared for easy runs to protect the legs probably first and foremost and just be comfortable and enjoyable just for yeah mooching around at your daily training paces rather than being speed focused that's good because a lot of people i mean most there's a lot of shoes out now that are, are, are like race shoes and stuff that you would quite easily class as cushion shoes um, but when we talk yeah. about it, we're really talking about the, the, the core use of them. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In a rotation, they'd be a shoe that you'd pair with faster shoes if you were having more than one shoe. Okay. Okay. Mike, max cushion shoes. So we've got cushion shoes. Now we've got max cushion shoes. It's a it's a buzz phrase at the moment. Everyone, everyone wants a max cushion shoe. But... What would you say is different about a max cushion shoe to a normal cushion shoe? Um, I think, you know, for me, I think the max cushion shoe is a shoe that's really kind of separating that space between, you know, from your foot and basically from the ground and creating that bigger stack in between those two things. And it's a shoe that I think we've seen that is, is emerged as a shoe that it's something that you would want to use for kind of longer, kind of easy runs, really kind of protecting your foot in a really kind of, you know, strong way. Um, and I, love to, I mean, there is plenty of debate still about how well, you know, they are versed in terms of doing that. But, you know, we are seeing a lot, pretty much all brands kind of offering a max cushion shoe option now. Mm. They just seem to be getting bigger all the time. Yeah. Yeah. With the way I look at it is like, you think about the classic, even at the start of our channel, the main cushion shoes, the most comfortable shoes we'd ever talk about were things like the Brooks Glycerin and Socoli Triumph. And now those are almost cushion daily trainers. And, uh, Max cushion shoes have come in as a whole level above them. Yes, yeah, and uh, I suppose obviously they've, there's a lot to do with the foam as well in them. Um, so a max cushion shoe can have a very different focus depending on what 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 type of foam they've got in there. Kieran, I'm going to put you on the spot here with this one because I know you're not a massive fan of cushion shoes a lot of the time. <laughs> this is probably going to be a trickier question for you to answer. But what what would you say are the main benefits of wearing cushioned shoes right i mean and th this is a bit of a hot topic as well it's a, it's a much kind of debated thing but i think when people think about max cushion shoes often they're thinking about okay i've got something that's gonna bring it bring me nice comfort it's gonna sort of soak up some lumps and bumps from underfoot so you're thinking about debris and stones and all that kind of stuff that you know it basically takes away some of the the stuff that's on the road but also softening the impact it's there's a lot of kind of science around this and some of it doesn't agree or in fact most of it doesn't agree there's actually been recent studies that sort of suggest that the opposite is true that max cushion shoes or big cushion shoes actually increase the force impact um and so it's a it's a bit of a difficult one because i know no, most people probably put them on and think i'm going to use these so that i can reduce the the impact on my joints uh, they're going to make the less fatigue for the muscles 
all of those things. But I don't, I'm not entirely sure that the science kind of backs that up. But that's one of the benefits that people would be looking for. I think there's also an argument for some of them that they, and this will all depend on what the foam is and, you know, what the geometry is, but they boost stability as well. So some of the big kind of max cushion shoes have a wider base. Uh, many of them actually, I think, have gone, you know, sort of Hoka kind of led the way with this, but they sit with the, they've got like a bucket kind of seat um, foot placement. So you sit a bit lower in the bed as well. So you've got higher walls that come up around that can enhance those feelings of stability as well. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, you've got more stable, wider than average base, um, soak up lumps and bumps. And then there's that idea that they're supposed to kind of soak up from the cushioning. And I think the overarching thing as well is some people kind of like a heavier shoe perhaps that, will slow them down by force when they're going to do their recovery runs. I'm kind of the opposite. I, I don't really like to feel like I'm working harder by having to lift my feet on a soft sort of cushioned shoe for my recovery runs. I'm happy to do them in, in kind of regular shoes. But I think those for me are the four or five main benefits that people look for. Anyone else get any, uh, any of the ones? I think maybe durability um, might be might yeah, be one as well. Yeah, you know, durability, a shoe that maybe you look to and say, well, look, this is the one shoe that I'm going to get. I know these are the kind of runs I'm going to do, and I really want it to cover a lot of my mileage. And I think that would, for me, that would be a thing that I would kind of look to from a cushion shoe, that it's going to be able to absorb a lot of running time and, what you know, if it's one shoe that you're going to choose to get. I think I worry about wonder about sometimes is, whether just because we are none of us like outstandingly fit really but we're all fairly lightweight and maybe if you're a bit of slightly heavier you get a bit more joy from those midsoles compared to the slightly lower stack ones that maybe bottomed out a bit for runners in the past and maybe that doesn't happen with the max cushion shoes but got nothing to really bear that out it's just a hunch <laughs> yeah 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 I, I think i think it's one of those things that makes it this is where it all sort of comes in because you know different runners put in different levels of force through every single shoe and we'll all have our own kind of unique amounts of force that are going down and how that interacts with the ground and and the density of the foams and what they do you know we probably all need our own kind of unique setup in an ideal world but and it's why essentially on some of the videos will have very different experiences and you can have comments from run tester viewers who'll say how on earth do you find that about that shoe or nova blast is one that springs to mind for me that people some people love and i can't get on with but yeah, I think. Well, we get a lot of stick because none of us really like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is a big, you know, big stack of cushioning. To me, it feels very soft, but I think to other people, it feels it, it feels very kind of springy. But oh, I found time. it felt amazing first run, but then really <laughs> dense. Mm. So yeah, dense. same. The other, dense I think, there, there, there's another important thing to say that not all big cushion shoes are necessarily pillowy soft either. So you can have firm cushion shoes as mm -hmm. well, just to make it even more complicated. Yeah, particularly kind of look at some of the ultras and those kind of things um also when you come to the max cushion shoes i think a, many of them will when they've got the higher stacks will start to kind of introduce the rocker as well um to help with that yeah. but so there's, there's there's a lot going on i mean i yeah i think it's it's, it's quite a complicated one to to nail down yeah i, I think that if you are not a run tester and you don't have loads of different shoes and you're constantly running in all these different cushion shoes i think if, if you're new to running or you maybe you've only ever ran in one type of cushion shoe your understanding of the different foams and stuff in cushion shoes is is quite limited so mm. um it's so if you're a buyer if you're going out to buy a cushion shoe it's very very difficult to sort of look at a shoe and go that's the one i want because ultimately you've got to try them all really um it's a bit different i think with speed shoes because you know, you can sort of see what they're designed for. You can see, you know, people winning races in them and stuff like that. So there's a little bit more guidance in terms of which are the best ones. But when it comes to cushioning, I've got, you know, about 10 different cushion shoes that I like wearing, but all for different reasons. Um, it's very difficult yeah. to choose which one to buy. Yeah. It is getting really complicated now with the fact that because foams are so, light, so lightweight, lots of speed shoes are now putting massive stacks on, not just the racing shoes, like the, the super trainer area we're talking about. We're all testing a shoe right now, which we probably can't talk about yet, but just a massive stack, fast mm. shoe. The ASIC Super Blast I've just got in, it feels absolutely incredible on the foot. Can't wait to run in it. Mm. But you'd look at that if you weren't you know, that into running and go, oh, that's a really good cushioned shoe. And actually it's really lightweight, kind of do everything shoe. It's not really a traditional cushioned shoe, but it's got what, 45 millimeter stack, yeah. right? Something like that. So yeah. everything is a bit, everything's messy because foams are so light now. I I, when I did that, the first review of the Super Blast, I got so many comments going, it's not a tempo shoe, it's not this sort of shoe, and somebody saying it's just yeah. a cushion daily shoe and all these sorts of things. And uh, nobody seemed to know exactly what that shoe was for. I see, even now, I'm still like not 100% sure 
the best use for it. You can use it as a, just a daily cushion shoe, a slow cushion, a slow run shoe. Um, so it's it feels like a shoe that's come around and has become a massive sleep here. A bit like the original Nova Blast that ASICs didn't really push and it became incredibly popular. Yeah. I feel like the Super Blast is, I mean, it's really expensive, so that will stop it doing that. But it does feel like a lot of people are just using it for everything. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing how you get on with it. I cannot wait. I've just been walking around in it at all times. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> all right. So move it, uh, carrying on with that. So if you're a runner and you're maybe you haven't tried lots of cushion shoes and you're, you're fairly new to it, what, what, what are people looking for in a cushion shoe? We talked about this a little bit earlier, but you go into a shop, like, like you know, uh, trying on some shoes. What, what are the sort of things that people are going to be, be trying out to find? I don't know. I feel like if I was new, I was just biased by my own experience, but I still, if I was looking at a cushion shoe, I would still not be going for a max cushion shoe from the off because I think it is quite a different thing. I I always told people, like, go in first shoes, I'd look at the Suckney Triumph, the Brooks Glycerin, the Brooks Ghost, and just get a really dependable shoe that works quite well for lots of people, is reasonably cushioned, but actually is still then able to do a lot of different runs. As a new runner, you don't really know what kind of runner you're going to be. And so I, I, yeah, I, I struggle to the idea that first shoe out of the box would be a max cushion shoe but mm. maybe i'm just being a bit old-fashioned and again I, I think there's there's research that sort of backs that up which is a similar argument as kind of barefoot running you know if you're if you go into one if you go into basically one extreme it can affect your biomechanics and if you're not kind of eased into it it can change the way that you run and lead to lead to injuries i think it, it's the same for kind of max cushion shoes as it is for if you're going for the minimal shoes so yeah Mm. Probably somewhere in between is is where you start, and if you want to kind of graduate up, then do it slowly. Um, yeah, I, rather I, than I, running all that, but I, I definitely think that race shoes, like carbon plate race shoes and cu- cushion shoes, are very similar in the way that it, you, it, it's like Princess in the Pea, isn't it? If it doesn't completely work for you, mm. you're not going to enjoy it. I was, I was talking to a guy the other day um, about he was saying I need to get a cushion shoe. He's fairly new to running, and I said just get just get the Triumph, mate. It's like fantastic really enjoyable nice solid shoe you can you just slightly versatile and he got it and he just said i hate it absolutely hate it and he, and he ended up getting a, a bondi um i mm. can't remember which one he got uh just because it, i think he just felt, felt the triumph was just too soft so bondi just worked for him it wasn't like and the bondi is not even really max cushion it wasn't until quite recently yeah. the bondi in like you look at stack i think that's quite a normal cushion shoe but yeah. That kind of set the trend, I suppose, and now it is quite a big stack, I think. Yeah. So, so with the, cushion that wasn't shoes, that the first one. I mean, that Hoka was Matt's cushioning, right? That was their first. Yeah. The I think it was one, though, wasn't it? Like Clifton was second, <clears throat> was it? But Clifton, I was first. For, I first started reviewing shoes. Clifton, I was thought that's a big old shoe. That you know, it's quite light, but it's a big cushion shoe. And now it's, yeah, it's quite a quite a good daily trainer, well balanced. That <laughs> and it's yeah. if anything, it's got bigger. But I just don't view it in the same way at all anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas it, basically, when it comes to cushion shoes, I always think you you do need to try them on. Like, it's a, bit, <laughs> yeah. it's a bit of a risk, isn't it? Especially with, you know, I would never say to somebody get the Nike Invincible Three if I didn't know the sort of runner that they were, no. because that's so, I mean, it's a lovely shoe if you if you want that sort of thing. But <laughs> um, I'd never say to anyone to get it. I I, I hate yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, if somebody said I to me, the- I want a really, really soft shoe for very comfortable yeah. runs, and that's all I want to do, I might go, well, okay, Vincible Food's probably going to be for you. If this guy I was speaking to was actually, he wanted a shoe just to do his training in, and he said, I want it to quite cushioned. So I'd never say that, because, you know, if he starts getting a bit faster and trying to do some intervals and stuff, he's going to buy another pair of shoes. Oh, I think also, when it, the stat gets that big, you really definitely like times you've got to try them on because you've got to make sure it it works with your gait essentially yeah. because they've they've got they've got big heel bevels to make everything quite smooth and everything. But yeah, you might not. You just this might just be too big in a weird way. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's let's talk a bit bit wider than specifics now. Um, so uh, we did this with carbon plate shoes in uh, an early video where we talked about how it's going to be developing. Uh, over the next couple of years or whatever, how do we think uh, car- cushion shoes are going to are going to be changing in, in in the near future? Mike, do you want to grab this one? I think I think we've already started to see it a little bit. I think some, and we've talked about some of the kind of what we class class as kind of traditional kind of cushion shoes have evolved to be very different things. I think I look at stuff like the Nimbus, where I think the version of this Nimbus is very different in terms of its use, in terms of what the previous Nimbus would be, and I think things in terms of what that kind of cushioning kind of delivers as well and what it offers i think you know we've seen 
the kind of evolution of kind of stability shoes and how we're using kind of different ways of delivering that support and guidance for people. And I think, you know, look at things like the Sockney Tempers and shoes like that, that how that cushioning is going to be used and utilised and what it's going to be used for, I think, is it's going to be interesting and changing maybe how those lines were kind of viewed in the past. Hmm. Yeah, the stability, I think, is big. I think I've started to enjoy using stability shoes like the Kano and the Tempus, even though I am a neutral runner just because it's just a little bit of support. It doesn't really take away anything from the ride. But, yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I, what would you guys guess the max stack height we see, we see in the next uh, couple of years is for a, for a cushion shoe? <laughs> I, I, I had a chat with, uh, well, I did a podcast with Kafuzi the other day, and we were chatting yeah. about this. And um, he, he was talking about how, Yes, the stack height is constantly getting bigger, but as he, he, as foams develop, you actually probably won't need as much stack height to get the same feeling that you get yeah. from. Yeah. Won't stop them though; they'll keep adding it to them. Well, we were talking <laughs> about getting a ninety millimeter shoe uh, at, at one point <laughs> to get more stack in, but uh, I, I reckon we'll go up to sixty-five. Wolf, <laughs> it'll be a ridiculous I, shoe, but it, look nobody will ever you testing that. that. I um. <laughs> but, I, I, I think, you know, right, again, I'm sort of rattling on, but about the kind of studies in the science, and it's, it's kind of early days for some of that. I'd be interesting to keep an eye on how those bits of research kind of pan out with whether or not people, we don't really know whether or not these shoes are going to lead to more or less injuries, I don't think. I think that's one to watch. Uh, I, I think there I might be a say bit there definitely won't be a difference, will there? It's like all the, all the research, it always just ends up with just get the one that feels nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just taking that 70 millimetre shoe, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean I, I i think there might there might even be a reaction to it so i i'm kind of with tom and Kafuzi on this i think they might yeah if they can get the same uh performance out of a lower stack then hmm. i think that's be probably the barefoot style backlash and everyone stopped using those shoes after a while yeah but i hope the future is the super bar style which is <laughs> look we put loads of stack on it's really bouncy and fun you can use it for anything only weighs 260 grams here you go. You've been very it swayed by the Super Blast very quickly. I'm running it. Yeah, I know. I've, I've had little jogs around the house. <laughs> but, um, I'm, I'm just like, it's so excited. It feels really nice. But I just feel like there'll be more of that. I think they might, uh, you know, there'll be a little bit of the all rounders will develop that, mm. oh, actually, you know, this you can use this for everything, but you just need the price to start coming down quite a bit. Unfortunately, it seems the price is going to keep going the other way. All right. Well, let's finish this off with a nice, easy question. What are our current favourite cushion shoes? Kieran, do you want to start us off? You can pick, we'll get one. You get to pick one. Okay, well, that's good because one of them was apparently unclassified according to Nick's classification. So I'll let you have my three that I had written down. I, for me, I mean, it's pretty simple. I think it's, well, two, Mac 5 on Cloud Monster. Those two, my favourites. Versatile, nice amount of cushioning, balanced in terms of weight, can do everything, feel comfortable. What did you pick in the video? Uh... Oh, yeah, I can't remember now. I think I think I might have said Speed <laughs> Three, but that's that's. Um, no, no, you pick a surfer, didn't you? Oh, Cloud Surfer. Did I do Cloud Surfer. Yeah, Cloud Surfer is another great one. I mean, I've loved the Cloud Surfer more recently as well. Yeah, so all of those. Three weeks later, you can't change two different oh, picks. Unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I think I just, maybe I've gone back to put. I was running in the Mac Five a bit more recently to do those the head to heads, and that's. Uh, but yeah, yeah. All, all three of those are good. Well, I'm guessing Nick's going to pick Super Blast that he's. Walk to the fridge with. <laughs> no, no, I'm, uh, I'm still, still stick to the Velocity Nitro too. I won't go on about it because people get oh, very I'll angry. Delete it now. I can't handle the comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Mike. Sorry, I keep recommending a very cheap, good value shoe. I don't want people so angry at me. Like, if I change my mind about what the best she was every week, that'd be annoying. I like, know. Oh, still really good. It's fifty quid now. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> go on, then, Mike. I mean, I was. I mean, initially, when we did the video, I, it, I thought it, well, I'm always going to say the Cloud Surfer, but for me, it's the Gel Nimbus um, mm. Twenty Five. Um, I, it's a shoe I've just picked up, and if I want to go and run in it, I'll run in. I don't know, you know, I can't necessarily do massively quick stuff in it, but I just know the upper is really comfortable, and that level of cushioning is just the right side of plush for me uh, in terms of what you get it. And it's just been a sh- shoe that I still use on a regular basis now, and I'd be happy to use. So that's one that's kind of really stood out for me at the moment. Can you guess what I'm going to choose? Tom Kayano, we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> might be, might be getting there. <laughs> uh, I think I've. It's, tr- it's tricky. I, I, I was. I told you about it, Nick, wasn't I? On a video when I was the Supply hmm. Triumph twenty. Was it Triumph twenty? No. Oh uh, yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. I'm you were, swaying. Were real heartfelt, heartfelt. Triumph twenty one <laughs> at the moment, but for different reasons. Like I wouldn't. I'd really struggle to choose between the New Balance Mor V four 
and the Socony Triumph 21 because I don't use them for the same reason. So that's where it starts to get murky with cushion shoes because basically I have two yeah. of them now. <laughs> well, you do. <laughs> yeah. And everyone else does. That's all, that's all I want to wear, especially now I'm running 30-minute 5Ks. Um, <laughs> right, all right then. Lovely stuff. Cheers, guys. That's it from us. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the little bell, all of those sorts of things, and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got coming out at the moment. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time.